Very good morning. I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about gas turbine unit those run using a combined cycle concept. So, in the last class you know we have talked about the multi staging and we had discussed the need of multi stage compression and also we had seen that for the multi stage compression intercooling is a must and we had seen that in a multi stage compression with intercooling we could save certain amount of work to run the compressor and it is intuitively expected that saved work will certainly increase the cycle efficiency. So, today we shall discuss that again from the perspective of the process diagram and if we map all those processes in a TS plane. Now, for the recapitulations what we have discussed you know we have discussed that air which is drawn into the compressor that air is compressed. Now, we need to run gas turbine units having certain pressure ratio higher the pressure ratio just by looking at the mathematical expression of the cycle efficiency, we can easily understand that with increasing pressure ratio efficiency will increase and if we need to achieve a higher pressure ratio, it is also doable by using a single, single stage compression. But as we have discussed that if we consider single stage compression certainly we can build that pressure, but at the exit of the compressor temperature rise will be so high that that rise in temperature which is associated with the rise in pressure will lead to the damage of several mechanical components of the compressor. Not only that you know this uh, when that gas temperature or temperature of any other working fluid increases and if we need to go for multi staging of course, we need to go for intercooling because it is easier to compress high density cool air than the hot air. So, multi staging is essentially an important aspect of the compression process wherein we need to compress at a high pressure and such a you know pressure will lead to an increase in temperature and that temperature may be vulnerable to several mechanical components and we need to go for multi staging. So, for the brief recapitulation if we consider that P v to the power n equal to constant for the compression process the generic reversible polytropic process. So, if we now just do some uh, calculation then we can write. So, we can write so we can see So, this is what we can see from this expression. So, if we consider this is the process which uh, represents the compression process following a reversible polytropic one and then we can see you know that del d p by d v is equal to minus n into p y v. So, what we could draw in the last class that if we try to process or several processes in this p v plane and if we need to raise the pressure from P 1 to P 2. So, this is say P equal to P 1 and this is equal to P 2 
and then we can see that th this is p v to the power n equal to constant. So, this is 1 to 2 and then we also can have another one process where n equal to 1 and the so, this is the process 1 to then 1 2 prime and 1 2 double prime. So, that means here if if we consider gamma less than n less than 1, if this is the sequence then we can understand this is basically p v to the power gamma equal to constant this equal to p v is equal to constant and certainly this is p v to the power n equal to constant. So, what we can understand if gamma is greater than n greater than 1 then in this p v plane whatever you know processes we could map we can easily say that you know reversible adiabatic compression this reversible adiabatic compression that is p v to the power gamma equal to constant is steeper than the reversible isothermal compression. Hence, work input to the compressor if the compression process follows reversible adiabatic one then it would be high and the minimum work would be needed for the reversible isothermal compression, but we have discussed that compression of any working fluid whether it is air or any other gas say for helium if we need to uh, say helium if we need to compress it. So, compression process if we need to consider reversible isothermal one then this reversible isothermal compression is not of that much use we have discussed because in this type of compression we need we can only increase pressure, but temperature will remain more or less constant. So, this is what we can discuss, we can see that without going into uh, much more mathematical analysis, just by using this relations, using this relation and mapping all the processes in this PV plane, we can see that reversible adiabatic compression is steeper than the reversible isothermal one. Hence, work needed under if we if we hatch the area under that process line in PV plane it would be much for the reversible adiabatic one. Okay. Now, what we would like to discuss today that in the last class we have discussed about intercooling and we had seen that so this is the first this is the first cylinder or LP cylinder low pressure cylinder that air is coming. So, this is intake air and that is again taken to this is intercooler and from intercooler we are again taking the working fluid to another cylinder that is high pressure cylinder H p stands for high pressure L p stands for low pressure and finally, that compressed air will be discharged so discharge at the so discharge uh, working fluid and this is what is the process. Now, this intercooler now it is if we try to draw here that discharge is again taken to the combustion chamber. and from there it is again taken to the gas turbine.
right. So, a case would have been like this, we are taking intake air to the low pressure cylinder, then we are taking that compressed air to this intercooler, from intercooler again essentially what we are doing, we are reducing the temperature of the air before it enters into the second stage compression. And finally, the discharged working fluid is taken to this combustion chamber or working fluid is discharged into this combustion chamber, wherein again by addition of it, it pressure and temperature increases and then it expands in the gas turbine and we are getting work output. And finally, this should be the final discharge. Now, what is important here to discuss that we could discuss in the last class that by mapping the processes in PV plane, we had seen that we can save certain amount of work input. Now, if we try to you know discuss the processes using a TS plane, then it will help us to understand even though we can save certain amount of work input, still the efficiency using this intercooling unit reduces and why it is reduced, we shall try to now understand. So, if we try to plot the processes in T s plane, so this is P equal to P 1, this is P equal to P 2, right. A common process would be that this is the isentropic compression 1 to 2 s, then again this is 3, this is 4 s and if we now consider that some degree of irreversibility will be there in both the compression and expansion process. So, this is 2 actual one, but this is this you know schematic say we are taking the air in this chamber and that compressed air is taken to this CC that is combustion chamber, we are supplying certain amount of Q in and that is again taken to this and finally discharge. So, now this is gas turbine and this is CC stands for combustion chamber. Now, a case would be like this that we are using single stage compression, but still would like to develop the same pressure that is pressure ratio is same. We are taking intake air in the compressor, single stage compression going to the combustion chamber, again we are having some amount of heat addition to this working fluid and finally, we are taking that working fluid having high pressure, high temperature into this gas turbine unit and it will, it will expand, working fluid will expand and we will be getting uh, work, uh, certain amount of work. Of course, to run this compressor, you know that uh, shaft is connected, that is what we had seen. So, if we you know erase this one, that means, this compressor is now connected to the gas turbine. Instead, what we are doing here, we are considering one intercooling unit we are having two different stages of compression, low pressure stage and then intercooling and the high pressure stage, finally to the combustion chamber and going to the gas turbine. The sole purpose is not, not to you know increase the temperature of working fluid you know substanti substantially, which would be there if we consider single stage compression and hence we can reduce you know the problems or we can eliminate several problems, those will be there with the single stage compression. We have discussed all those, 
then for a single stage compression volumetric efficiency will be less, COEP will be less, work input will be more and then you know uh, and also you know that uh, degree of irreversibility will be more in this case for this single stage compression. So, what we are doing you know here, we are doing now this compression of the air using this intercool inter intercooler or intercooling unit. So, now here, so this is cold water and this is hot water. Now, if we try to map the processes here in this T s plane, then you can see certainly in the low pressure stress turbine pressure will increase from 1 to you know if we give name. So, this is 1, this is 2, then this is 3, this is 4, this is 5 and this is 6. Right? So, 1 to 2 will be there, but you know that this is low pressure cylinder. So, compression ratio should be less. So, what we can do? We can assume that now what will happen if we this this compression will be there up to an intermediate pressure and we really do not know let us assume this is the intermediate pressure. So, now this is you know this this is the amount of rise in pressure in the low pressure stress compressor then what we are doing if we go back to the previous slide rising pressure of the working fluid we are taking in we are taking that working fluid inside the intercooler. So, the temperature will reduce and that reduction in temperature will be at constant pressure say this is the reduction in temperature up to this. So, this would be you know say 3 because here so 2 to 3 that is reduction in temperature of the working fluid and that is you know at constant pressure that heat will be taken away by the cold water that is you know supplied to the intercooler. Then again 3 to 4 would be rise in pressure that is from pressure 2. So, that means you know here we are trying to rise pressure from P 1 to P 2 and now again that pressure will be developed in a high pressure stress unit 3 to 4 that you can see from this from the schematic di diagram 3 to 4 and then finally 4 to 5 that is the heat addition at constant pressure in the combustion chamber we are assuming that so that is pressure rise in this pressure rise of the working fluid at the end of the second stage of compression is equal to the rise in pressure by the single stage compression. So, you can see that we could you know develop pressure from P 1 to P 2 by using these two different stages. We started from here then up to this intermediate pressure then again cooling and then finally, rising in temperature and then finally, this 4 to say 4 to 5 say this is 5 right and we are assuming say this is again 3 to 5 and you know this 6. So, this could be 6 s comma 6. So, as if again we are adding certain amount of energy to the working fluid by burning fuel and we are able to supplies equal amount of energy and then it is again coming to that point and finally, expanding in the compression in the, in the turbine. So, what we can see from this particular depiction what is the work input? So, work input is you know work input is with intercooling equal to C p into what we can see work input C p into T 2 minus. So, T 2 minus T 1 say this is also 2 here right. So, this is 2 prime 
So, you know T 2 minus T 1, then T 1 plus C p into T 4 minus T 3, because this is another you know work input. So, essentially 1 to 2 prime and then 3 to 4 prime and work input without intercooling will be equal to C p into like this. So, C p into you know T t 2 or say I am right T a minus T 1. So, say this is now I am giving a name this is this is a. So, T a minus T 1 what we can do next we can write that work input without intercooling equal to C p into T a minus T 1, we can split it into C p into if we go back to this C p into T a minus T 1, now we can split it C p into T 2 prime minus T 1 plus C p into T 4 minus T 3. So, we can split it C p into T 2 prime minus T 1 plus C p into T a minus T 2 prime right, because just we are doing this uh, algebraic manipulation here, then you can understand if we now write here that work input with intercooling that already we have written in the previous slide equal to C p into if we go to the previous slide T 2 prime minus T 1 T 1 plus C p into T 4 minus T 3 right. If we go back to the previous slide that is what we had written previous in the previous slide. So, C p into T 2 prime minus T 1 plus C p into T 4 minus T 3 right. So, this is with intercooling and this is without intercooling, but the objective is to get equal pressure ratio and we are also trying to you know supply the amount of heat for which if we consider single stage compression then heat addition will be T 3 minus T a or T 3 minus T a s that is depending on the actual or ideal cycle or with intercooling it should be T 3 minus T 4 that is the heat addition. Okay. So, now if we compare these two equations, if this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. If we compare these two equation, then certainly following our previous you know discussion that work input needed following reversible adiabatic compression, but using an intercooling unit is less than the work that would be required for the reversible adiabatic compression, but using a single stage compression no intercooling effect. So, the first term now if we consider here this term is equal to this term. So, work input without intercooling and work input with intercooling. So, this quantity I mean work input with intercooling should be less than work input without intercooling provided this quantity is less than this because this is common. So, that means we can write that work input with intercooling should be less than work input without intercooling provided 
this C p into this term T 4 minus T 3 is less than T a minus T 2 prime. Right? So, we can write uh, T 4 minus T 3 is less than T a minus T 2 prime. So, if this is a case, then only work input with intercooling should be less than work needed to compress the air without intercooling. It is also true, you know, if we look at, if we look at this T s plane, you can see that constant pressure line, constant pressure lines, we have drawn two constant pressure lines here and we can see these lines, you know, diverge as we move from left to right and hence, it is easily understandable that T a minus T 2 prime is certainly greater than T 4 minus T 3, right. T 4 minus T 3 is this and T a minus T 2 prime is this. So, certainly T a minus T 2 prime is greater than T 4 minus T 3 that we can get from this T s plane. So, here, so if we write, so this is, we can see that uh, we can see from the T s plane that constant pressure lines diverge as we move from left to right. So, this is true and hence whatever we, we could establish in the last class from the PV plane that saved amount due to intercooling is also getting justified from this analysis from by, by mapping the processes in a T s plane. So, now this is you know this would be same is very important. Now, if we go to the previous slide, just if we look at you know this would be same as if this is a case you know that if we assume that efficiencies of both compressions, we are having compression in the low pressure, low pressure cylinder and high pressure cylinder. So, you know that isentropic efficiencies of these two compressors operating separately are each equal to the isentropic efficiency of the single stage compression. So, that means, in using an intercooling unit, what we are doing? We are essentially allowing air to be compressed following two different stages and if we assume that the isentropic efficiency of both compressors, though they are working separately and if they are each equal to the isentropic efficiency of the single stage compressor, single stage compression, then this is true. Also, you can see from this T s plane that these two lines diverge as we move from uh, left to right. So, hence this T a minus T 2 prime is certainly greater than T 4 minus T 3. Hence, it is easily you know perceptible from this uh, diagram that work input with intercooling unit should be less than work input without intercooling. Now, question is this is ok. Now, as we have discussed in the last class, what would be the work ratio? You know work ratio, work ratio is defined as the work of a turbine work or expansion work that is the positive work minus compression work divided by you know uh, expansion work. What we can see from this analysis that this work, so this is W c, this is W t and this is also W t. Now, W c is less for 
compression with intercooling. Hence, work ratio of the work ratio will be more if this is less then work ratio will be more for the compression processes or the for the gas turbine unit having multi stage compression. Question is although we can ensure that the work ratio will be high, but still efficiency of the gas turbine units having multi stage compression is less why it is so we know efficiency is equal to net work output by the heat addition. What we can see from this you know that again if we look at this T s plane what is the amount of heat addition needed if we consider single stage compression that is T 3 minus T a if it is actual cycle or it is T 3 minus T a s if it is ideal cycle. But now heat addition which we need to supply to the combustion chamber to get equal amount of work output in that case the heat addition should be T 3 minus T 4. Certainly, T 3 minus T 4 is higher than T 3 minus T A or T 3 minus T A S. So, this extra amount of heat addition that should be there because of this intercooling effect will reduce the cycle efficiency even after achieving higher comp work ratio. So, the reduction in rather increase in heat addition that should be needed to run the unit having multi stage compression with intercooling should be such that after having higher work ratio the overall or gross impact is cycle efficiency reduces. Not only that as we have discussed for the intercooling unit we need to supply water or any other coolant and for that again we need to have mechanical components. So, installation of all those mechanical components as well as you know uh, maintenance will eventually increase the total cost associated with this unit and hence even though intercooling effect in increases work ratio, but the gross out in you know impact is the reduction in thermal efficiency. I also would like to discuss another important issue that I forgot in the last class that you know very important is what should be the intermediate pressure at which this intercooling effect will be uh, performed. So, this intermediate pressure that is this pressure line right. So, this is intermediate pressure. So, this is intermediate pressure. This intermediate pressure should be such that the pressure ratio that is P 2 by P 2 prime by P 1 should be equal to P 4 by P 3. So, this is very important that when you are talking about multi stage compression pressure ratio in each stage should be equal. So, intermediate pressure will be selected in such a way that for a multi stage compression pressure ratio in it each stage should be equal. So, just I am writing that this P 2 prime by P 1 should be equal to P 4 by P 3. So, this is basically a condition for the intermediate pressure. That means, pressure ratio in its stage should be equal right. So, this is uh, I am writing here pressure ratio in each stage should be equal. Okay. Now, with this let us now discuss about the combined cycle plant. So, combined cycle plant. The concept of combined cycle from where it is coming, why it is needed. We all know that uh, gas turbine units 
are largely used in aircraft fuel and propulsion, but still if we if you recall we had discussed about the use of closed cycle gas turbine units and typically closed cycle gas turbine units are used in captive power plant, gas cooled nuclear reactor and sole purpose is to supply certain amount of energy as and when you know demand increases. And this gas turbine plants are known as peaking unit to supply you know certain amount of energy when demand increases. So, closed cycle gas turbine units are typically used in captive power plant and these are known as peaking unit to supply certain amount of energy when demand increases. Now, question is there are several disadvantages of gas turbine units. What are those? Large compression ratio, high exhaust loss, high degree of irreversibilities associated with both compression and expansion process, then low cycle efficiency that we have discussed. Even after increasing work ratio, it is not possible to increase cycle efficiency that we have discussed today. So, accounting for all these problematic issues, there are certain applications wherein gas turbine units are used, but still there are several advantages as well because uh, you know less installation cost and installation time and also this gas turbine units you know respond quickly to the change in demand or load and we can start quickly you also can you know stop this unit quickly. So, now question is despite having a few disadvantageous features still there are some advantages and accounting for this advantageous feature or new concept that is the use of combined cycle. What is done here you know? We had seen that if we consider this is the compressor, then we are having combustion chamber. we are supplying certain amount of Q in as if we are supplying fuel and you know we are supplying certain amount of heat. So, basically in this unit we are having heat addition to the working fluid. So, this is compressor. So, and then this is uh, So, and now so this is gas turbine unit right and this is heat exchanger in which you know this is heat exchanger. this is heat exchanger and here you know what is done if we try to use
So, we can say there are two you know cycles, one is known as topping cycle, another is bottoming cycle. So, we had seen that in a gas turbine unit, we have high exhaust losses. Had we not used the gas that comes out from the turbine to this heat exchanger, it would not have been possible to utilize that heat, it would not have been possible to recover that heat. Essentially what we are doing, we are taking the gas that comes out from the gas turbine after doing certain amount of work to this heat exchanger, wherein that gas which is having high temperature you know is taken away by this stream that is water. So, here we are having this is H2O plus stream cycle and that is gas cycle. Right? So, let me tell you it is because of this high exhaust loss gas turbine units are having low cycle efficiency. Now, the idea behind this combined cycle is to utilize the heat or energy which will otherwise will be rejected to the ambience and utilizing that energy we can run the steam cycle or steam power unit and we can run another steam turbine. So, we have discussed about steam power cycle and we had seen that boiler will be there, but here there is no boiler but the amount of energy that will be released by the gas that comes out from the gas turbine in this heat exchanger to the working fluid that is the water, that water will be converted into steam and it will again taken to the steam turbine wherein the working fluid will expand. So, water will be converted into steam that steam will expand now in the steam turbine and we will be getting work output. So, here we are getting W out 1, we are getting W out 2. Right. So, if we can run this unit perhaps we are getting work output from the gas turbine, work output from the steam turbine though certain amount of work that would be needed to be supplied to compressor here. So, that means, if we draw here that right. So, this is the common shaft. So, idea is to use two different cycles and you know two cyclic power plants are coupled in series to produce network output. Right? So, idea is to utilize the heat as I said you and utilizing that heat to run this bottoming cycle and that is the H2O cycle. So, topping cycle is gas cycle, bottoming cycle is H2O cycle and by running these two cycles we can get the power and as I said you gas turbines or closed cycle gas turbine unit this is are known as speaking units and the speaking units are used to supply certain amount of energy when demand increases. So, now if we go for some analysis, so what we can see? Now we can see that there are two different cycles one is gas turbine cycle, then gas turbine cycle you know that if we consider this is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. Similarly, we have this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is uh, sorry, this is 2, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Right? So, for the gas turbine cycle we can write T c by T d that is expansion that equal to P 2 by P 1 power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. So, expansion process inside the gas turbine as I said you that gamma for compression may not be equal to gamma for expansion because 
we are adding certain amount of fuel here in real applications and hence gamma and Cp will change. So, this is gas turbine cycle this is for expansion and for the compression we can write T b by T a equal to P 2 by P 1 power gamma minus 1 by gamma. Again I am telling, so this is for the compression. So, gamma for compression may not be equal to the gamma for expansion. Now, this is we can write, then what, what would be work output? So, work output from the gas turbine unit should be equal to m dot of the mass flow rate of the air into C p gas you know expansion into T c minus T d minus C p into compression air into T b minus T a right. So, what we are assuming? We are assuming as I said you that this gamma may not be equal, this C p g and C p a are not equal because those are different and we are assuming mass flow rate of air only because essentially when we will be getting work output we need to consider mass flow rate of fuel as well. So, ideally this should be m dot a plus m dot f, but if we consider higher fuel air ratio uh, higher air fuel ratio sorry. So, for higher air fuel ratio it is more or less m dot a because fuel is very less. Now, what about steam turbine work output? Then work output from steam turbine cycle or steam power cycle that is W S T equal to mass flow rate of steam into enthalpy drop H 2 minus H 3 that we had seen in the in our previous lectures that is you know uh, H 3 minus H 4 right. So, now question is we need to go for energy balance. For energy balance we have to draw the T s diagram. right. So, this is P condenser and this is P boiler. So, this is the uh, point 3, this is point 4, this is point 1, this is point 2. So, this is steam power cycle that we had uh, discussed many times before. Now, there is a topping cycle and that cycle is in the T s plane is like this if we try to draw using this color right. So, right. So, this is C, this is D, this is A, this is B. So, this P equal to constant this p equal to constant and this is the heat addition q in and this is q out right. So, I should write q out gas turbine So, this is q out gas turbine right. Now, you can see that amount of energy released by the gas will be taken away by this or taken by the water and it will be converted into steam ok. So, if we now do the energy balance what we can write now by energy balance we can write. So, basically amount of energy that we need to supply to run the gas turbine unit. What is this? We are supplying this is T c. So, if you go back to the previous slide. So, basically you know that is the amount of energy available 
with the working fluid before it enters into the gas turbine and finally, that energy of the flowing stream flowing uh, gas is producing certain amount of work here and then remaining energy is transferred to the bottoming cycle that is the H H2O cycle. So, we really do not know. So, we consider T c minus say T f. So, let us consider this is the point this is the point f. So, this is the point f right. This energy now would be equal to this would be equal to m dot s into h 3 minus h 4 right. So, basically this is energy balance energy supplied into the gas that is equal to this m dot s e p g into T c minus T f that would be equal to m dot s into h 3 minus h 4. So, now then this is the expression we can write from the energy balance right. So, part of that energy is producing gas turbine work remaining part of this energy is utilized to producing steam turbine work. So, this is basically the energy balance. Now, what is Q in? Then Q in that is equal to m dot a into C p g into T c minus T b right. So, this basically you know that that is the amount of energy you can see that T c minus T b that is Q in that is eventually that is the total addition of heat into this system having two different cycles. So, this is the Q in. So, the overall efficiency of the combined cycle eta overall equal to net work produced that is steam turbine plus W gas turbine divided by Q in right. So, this is what we can see from this. So, we could write the overall expression of the overall efficiency and that is the total work output from both cycles divided by the total energy added to the system. So, now the advantage of this combined cycle is you know high overall efficiency, low water requirement and then low environmental impact. So, though closed cycle gas turbine units are not used uh, frequently for power generation, but closed cycle gas turbine units are connected in series with the steam power cycle to produce certain amount of load or to supply certain amount of load when demand increases. But despite having several disadvantageous feature of the closed cycle gas turbine unit, still when that unit is now connected in series with the steam turbine unit, we can have a few advantages like high overall efficiency, low environmental impact and low water requirement. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.